Hey everybody, welcome to another deck profile. This is Blake from Outcast Gaming. I'm joined today by Jason. We're going to talk about, uh, we're actually going to do something new. We're going to do a deck profile for Fab. And we're going to talk about a new character that just came out in the Crucible of War release. It's uh, Cav Dane, Traitor of Skins. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cav Dane World. Welcome to the Cav Dane World. So I wanted to start. It's funny because uh, Dane and I on the channel are super into lore, and we really like the lore of games and the lore of anything we do. And it's funny because Jason likes it, but isn't as into it as us. So we oftentimes will like fill him in after the fact. And I think it's great because Cav Dane is one of those characters that Jason was immediately drawn to. I think some of it's the art. Jason loves the art in this game. It's like the bloodier, the better. But I think Cav Dane is actually the best representation of a character Jason just kind of loved instantly and was super intrigued by. And it's great because his lore fits perfectly into something Jason would love because he is a character who actually is exactly what he says. He's a trader of skins. He actually makes deals with people where he gives them a loan. And then when they that deal falls through and they don't have a way to pay him back, he gets his money back or his, his uh, return on investment becomes their flesh and blood. They literally have to give it to him. And he takes it and then his weird thing beyond being a salesman is that his true passion is he's an artist and he likes to make these sculptures of the parts of bodies that he dissects and creates these like crazy sculptures that he actually sells to the most powerful players down in the pits and people actually come from the world above they come down and actually buy them from him too so it's a it's a hilarious thing because it's totally in jason's wheelhouse for the art and style of character that he would yeah, like i was excited to hear that that's it's pretty cool it's gruesome but just fits a lot of the world that that fab is in yeah it, it's it's so fab appropriate to have a character like this and i love that you know he he exists and his deck is super interesting jason was 100 percent on board with this as a team we oftentimes just kind of everybody kind of calls things and we'll play certain classes and things he's a generic character and he didn't really have a specific class so nobody kind of was immediately drawn to him as far as the class went and nobody really had automatically all the cards per se or didn't have all the cards because he's generic so let's talk about the deck concept obviously being generic means he's got some restrictions he can't he doesn't have specializations he can't use certain equipment but he does have some benefits to that so jason talk about the deck concept a little bit the first run of this deck was absolutely horrible me and dane played i, I couldn't even tell you what dane played but it didn't function because I just tried to throw in good cards and not always good cards make a good deck. So the concept was with his ability to cash in, it's a three, it's an expensive ability. So if I ever wanted to use that ability, I wanted to make this deck run as lean as possible and use the most broken cards from generic that you can. And that doesn't just mean like your enlightened strikes, which is arguably probably one of the best majestic generics in the game but your nimbleisms your plunder runs there's so many very very good cards that can make this deck really hit hard from the very first turn on and you're not doing dominates or intimidates so there's a lot of things that you're not doing as far as that goes but what you are doing is in many of my games, I think even in our game, uh, Blake, I hit for 13 or 14 on turn one or two. And it wasn't, it's not that hard to set up something like that. And you can just use everything that's generic that normally, as we were talking about, Scar for Scar is a great ninja attack card. Well, Bravo's not going to run Scar for Scar. Dorinthy is not going to run Scar for Scar. But this deck can run Scar for Scar in your Command and Conquer, in your Enlightening Strike, in your Ravenous Rabbles. Ravenous Rabble, you're not going to see in Ninja, but you'll probably see that in Dorinthia. But you're going to see that in here because it's running so lean, it's going to hit hard more times than not. And just the inherent go again on that is amazing. Yeah, I think it's a super interesting deck in the sense that because you're able to play so many zero cost things, what ends up happening is you don't mind blocking with a card or two from hand because it's really possible that you have two cards in hand that are free play. So it comes your turn 
and you're still able to do more than one thing. You can ravenous rabble into something else because you're not re you're not requiring two and three and four cards to create some sort of combo. So you're actually able to block a little more than I think some decks are willing to because some decks are just kind of resource starved. And this deck is interesting because you kind of have the the yin and yang of the deck. The the one side you've got your equipment, which you're kind of forced into a pretty specific corner as far as what you can run obviously the only weapon you really have access to is talishar the lost prince it's not bad obviously it's a good card no it's good it's a four it's a four hit so if you have so like you said you could maybe you have where i do one of my free plays for a three four little hit that person lets it through if i have go again um or i have my time snap out you pop it for another four damage and that's seven with one one card in hand possibly so like you said you can block three cards and still use uh and still get seven damage off when you get arguably one of the one of the best just generic things in the game which is the spring tunic right like you get access to that which is obviously super beneficial but then of course you have access to the iron rot and you've got the null rune so you've got you've got some equipment that can help you but what really shines in the deck ultimately was when I, I had a good laugh when you sent the deck stats over because we use the fabdb.net. We love it. We all build our decks on there. It's amazing. And one of the things that we love about it is it breaks down the stats of the deck. And it's I love that part of it because it will help you before you even play the deck, get a sense of like your cost curve. And if you're right, and this deck's cost curve is borderline hysterical having an average card cost of 0.65 in a pitch of 1.8 is bananas like you're basically always going to be able to pay for everything unless you have some some really strange hand but what happens as a result of that is like you you're always having access to things you always have the resources to play your cards you almost never get back into a card. i don't think we ever played around where you weren't able to play the cards in your hand you nope, didn't never. you weren't resource starved because the deck runs so high and then what's interesting about it is like it, we were even talking about this, how it's funny because in theory, if the pitch is so high and the cost is so low, you would typically do one of two things. You'd put more expensive cards in or you'd put less pitch value cards in. But there are times where, you know, having a blue or a yellow is just nothing you can do about it. That's the color of the card. You're running one of you're running the version of the card and it's a yellow. And there's nothing you can't change it from a two pitch to a one pitch. I think you could probably come down a little bit on your pitch value, but I don't know that you could really even would touch the pitch value. Right. So here's I'm just gonna name off a couple of things that I'm am gonna change on it. So we'll put the deck list up. Uh, I'm running two unmovables. I am going to swap those out for reinforce the line just to stay with the free play. So the average card cost will come down, but I'm going to put blues in strictly for uh, arcane damage. I don't want to remove those blues for that reason. Um, I will probably, if reinforce the line becomes uh, very meta, I would probably pull command and conquer, to be honest with you, because reinforce the line plays around mm -hmm. command and conquer so well because it is an instant and you can boost that defense card uh the attack action defense card up so i think it it makes command and conquer not as good in the splits format when you're really trying to hit hard i would put in maybe a wounding blow promise of plenty um seems like good replacements for that and then cash in i don't use that very often because it seems like i hit so hard so fast and this character's got 20 i'm very rarely behind in health even from the very beginning with this just because, like you said the free play so if i'm going first i'm going to arsenalize uh something hopefully with go again that would be my goal and then past turn i'm going to use two to three cards to block and still hit for six seven damage and that's just the way it's going to play with with blocking and not taking much life so I do run two cash ins. Those could go down to one possibly, and then the other one that I for equipment is the heart and cross strap. This is something else that I could add in there because sometimes I don't need the spring tunic. I don't need the resource. I, I had I think in our game I sat on that one resource for two or three turns because I didn't need it. There's nothing in the deck needs it until you do your your uh, razor reflex going for that big hit. I sometimes just don't need that resource. But it is nice for that, so that if you have a full hand or red, you can hit so hard in one turn. 
Yeah, he's an interesting character because we talked about this a little bit on the podcast, and I think it's true. I think it's possible that this set gave us a bunch of Blitz characters who their effects can almost be a trap at times. There are some characters like Kasai who I think her effect is just so good that it just triggers on its own because it's what you're trying to do. But then other characters can kind of put you in a trap. I think Benji is like that, where it can put you in a little bit of a trap. And I think Cav Dane has got one of those effects where maybe there's a matchup where you use it because you're trying to accomplish something different. Maybe you're playing a slower game, so it triggers. But he has this inherent ability that, honestly, I don't think you triggered one time against me or Dane. I, I think it just it just existed. It was just a, a it was just some text on his card. <laughs> yep, it was. And just going back to the whole, I can use all the generics. You're not going to use all these generics. You're not going to get all these free costs. And a lot of decks don't want the free costs. But to make a deck that I, I'll be curious, we'll we'll put the stats up. But I'm guessing the average card cost when I'm done. Uh, doing a little bit of modification after getting playthroughs is going to be in that 0.4 range. I think it's going to be that ridiculous. And like I said, I'm not going to change that average pitch just for Arcane. I have 12 three pitch, and I I feel I will get just blown away if I get by Arcane unless I can hit so fast that they don't have any cards to play. That would be the only way. I, I definitely think that that's always the the one thing that will keep decks from running too much red and yellow is the fact that arcane exists yep. because you can't afford to have two turns in a row where you're taking arcane damage and you're holding a bunch of one and maybe a two pitch card if you don't have some three pitches there's a point in time where in the deck where you're you're just going to die because you have no defense it would it's it's there's just certain things in this game where you kind of have to have a balance and i think that's what makes him interesting is Theoretically, you could probably run him almost all red and then some yellow. You could. It could be so close. Yeah, and you just need that blue. And I think that's what makes the deck really unique is that we talked about this is a lot of decks run generics to boost their strategy. So they kind of have a built-in strategy, whether it's Warriors wanting to swing that sword a ton of times, Bravo just trying to hit you like a ton of bricks, or Ninja pinging at you, but probably playing a lot of times a little bit from behind. So they, Ninja tends to combo Wombo a little late and try to put on the pressure so it can be behind. So it's going to run things like Scar for a Scar. Warrior is always going to run Razor Reflex because it just makes sense. And then things like Guardian or especially like Brute loves to run something like Pummel where it can just boost that one thing and put the hurt on you. And it's interesting because in Cavdane, he runs a lot of everything. He He gives himself a lot of options because... He's playing all the good generic cards, and as a result, kind of just has a ton of lines of play, and you just kind of see what your hand has. You look at it, and you just go for it. You play whatever comes to your hand. Yep, and I, I think that's... So when I first ran it, I ran all the potions, not because I thought they were all going to work well, but because I wanted to see which one I wanted. And the two time snaps, I think, are crucial for the deck because... With a lot of the go agains, I can get them out there pretty easily at the end of my turn. But for a big and lightning strike turn, if you can arsenal lightning strike and then burst that time snap and hit that for seven, and you're going to have a four or five attack coming right behind it, that's another huge. Your opponent's either going to drain all their cards because they have to block so much, or it's just in blitz, it's over. The, those those are such huge swings. Yeah, it has that feel at times of the warrior decks that are able to have these turns later in the game where because they're so efficient at putting on pressure with pretty minimal resources they're able to constantly feel like they're ahead which is the best feeling in the world as a warrior player i love the fact that warrior is good early game and just amazing as a closer and that seems to be what cav dane does well is He's really good early game at putting on pressure, but then what makes him great is because he has a lot of zero cost stuff, he's able to take those turns in games where a lot of decks, if they continue to block or they use two cards to block, it's basically that's it. Like for the rest of the game, they're going to play from behind unless they draw into a really good hand. And that's the struggle of Blitz sometimes is when you get behind, you're just behind and you can never get ahead right? because there's not enough health to take a turn off. Whereas certain archetypes have that ability to 
block with two cards and they're so energy efficient and they're so cost efficient that they're actually able to turn the game. So if he gets behind a little bit, he's so he's so efficient that you can use two or three cards from hand and still put a little bit of pressure on and pull a card or two and make a two or three turn swing where he gets back into games that he's behind in. Right, right. No, nope, it's I, I like it. I mean, and there's there's a lot of different ways you could look at this deck. And I think this is the way I like the best that from my personal gameplay style, when I play Bravo, I get too aggressive with it, too aggro. And it really takes everything I have to use cards to block, to set up turns three times later. And in this deck, I can block and still do my turn, which feels really good. Yeah. I think that makes him super interesting is that you're able to block and have a turn because a lot of times in this game, if you block, you don't have a turn, or if you overblock, or if you block too much, you don't have a turn. And it's cool because he offers you the ability to do that. And I think that's probably the other thing that is interesting about him is I think you've got a good start and you have an interesting build to your approach. But that's what's kind of cool about him is I think there is an opportunity for alternate approaches in his deck where maybe somebody could play more defensive and play a little slower for some bigger turns and try to abuse different mechanics in his deck as of right now what we've seen i don't know if there's a ton of things that you could change i think you could play around with the idea of we've talked about like moon wish and sun kiss which is a card that you probably just never see in anything but maybe could have a place in his deck because you could abuse it in a way that you don't in other decks because you can't put enough of it in another deck right right so that that's the defensive way to play and i think Bravo already does that for me, and that's why I didn't build him that way, is because that's already a very defensive deck. The other thing that you could do with this deck, and this is just playing with pitch costs, which is one of the greatest parts of deck building in this game, is you could look at your generics and go, I want to go with an average two resource cost cards. So you're looking at your five to eight hitters uh, for that, and you could run a red-blue 50-50 split with only playing two resource cards which are your bigger hitters so there's uh i mean command and conquer is a six for that uh regurgitating slots a six hit so there's different ways that you could maybe put your sun moon wish with more of that mid-range bigger swing hits not a lot of not as many free plays you could still put some of those free plays in but you're looking at more of Instead of doing the three fours that I'm doing with this deck, and but trying to do two, three of those a turn, you could be going those six or eight to try to get one or two of those in. So I, I just think the sky's the limit on this deck. And that's why I think he's so fun. And I love that they put him in Blitz specifically because he would be a bizarre character in Constructed because of the deck size. I think the deck size would be near impossible you'd basically have to put every generic card in the game but i'm excited to see what they do as the game goes forward if merchant gets class specific cards or if it just continues to be a generic thing and then maybe they splash in some cards that are beneficial to merchant you know what i mean what would be really cool is if they made a warrior card that says warrior or merchant a guardian card guardian or merchant so mm. it would be either that class because i think that plays on the merchant because he's a merchant so he gets everything um but yeah. not he gets a lot but he can't have everything that those decks have access to but just give him access to one or two maybe rare cards under under each uh each class type i think that'd be a cool mechanic for a merchant that would make sense same even with the shapeshifter that would be a mechanic that would make sense with the shapeshifter as well yeah it'd be interesting to see if they would do something where maybe in the future they offer an opportunity to the merchant to include more cards from a like the character perspective right it's possible they make a constructed merchant character that has it built in that you can include two cards from each class or one right something like that that, that would, would be, be a really cool thing because i think he would benefit a ton from just have an axe if they would have built anything where you can pick two cards from one class or something yep. that you could have added it, it would be it would put him really over the top but that's what would make him fun is that even now is flexible so if they did something in the future with merchant where you could do something that would be really cool 
I think that's what makes this game great is that they are now reaching that point in the, the game's life where they're starting to explore and you're starting to see the expansion of of theory crafting and deck building because they've now hit a point where they've taught us all the mechanics and now it's time to shine and give us a chance to to be deck builders and to see the other side of the game where the game starts to create some more depth and i think he's an interesting character to start with which is why i think you were immediately attracted to him this idea of doing something different yeah and it's been fun and like i said we will post uh i'm gonna put the list that that i most recent recently ran uh, we'll put that uh, in the description, a tag for it. And then some of the changes that I, I'm going to make for our next run. So we'll put some TTS games up of just more characters, a lot of blitz. I eventually want to get some more constructed and then plus our live stream. I'll probably start out live stream again with Kavdane uh, with my newest build for that. But just put them out, play them around with them. Tell us what you think. Try them out. See if you like them. And and just let us know what what you think of this deck because i i i think it's the most fun deck i have and i play bravo and wizard those are my two main decks but this deck is i don't, I don't know what it is it's just fun to play and that makes me want to play the game more so yeah i think that's the that's a good segue into making sure that if you're listening to this and you want to see some cov dane uh, we had a chance to see him on the live stream Tuesday. We'll have him again this Tuesday on the live stream. So check it out every Tuesday on our YouTube channel. If you want some some notifications for that, you can like, subscribe, you hit the bell, and it'll ding you for some notifications when we go live because we go live right now just once a week, but we might throw some times in where we're just uh, having some free time. We might play. Or if we have a chance to play some tournaments and things like that with some of our friends from New Zealand, we might throw some live games up and some gameplay where we're having a chance to live stream that. And uh, yeah, so we, we're, we're grateful that you guys are listening. We hope you enjoy. We hope that you like it. If you need some singles for the game, we check out our partner, Top Deck TCG. Use our code, Outcast Haven. That'll get you 10% off your whole order. It's our promo code. Chris is great. We love Top Deck DCG. We've had a great relationship with him. He's doing a great job helping us promote the game and get the stuff out there. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening. And uh, we hope you enjoy the game and we hope you enjoy the deck. See you next time.